皆さん、こんにちは。And welcome to Shogo's podcast. So, today, guys, I'd like to talk a little bit about、uh, another story about Katana. <laughs>、um, because recently I'm a main channel too, I, I、uh, make、uh, videos about Katana and Yada related stuff too much that a lot of people have been telling me in the DMs that、uh, they're kind of getting bored of that kind of content. So, in the future, in the near future, please don't worry.、Um, it is winter time, so I can't handle the Katana as much as I want to. So, I will have to make.、Um, Uh, content that's related to different topics and such. So I hope we can give a little bit, little bit more time. But, anyways, today I like to talk a little bit about my opinion towards the question or my, my answer to the question why can't Japan just simply produce more katana, more Japanese swords? So, I often t-、um, talk about that the,、uh, the industry of making Japanese swords, the katana, is dying out、um, because there aren't any people、um, training in how to make it. There's less and less people you know, engaged in the,、um, the The process, you know, the creation of katana, and that's because the instructor level people, you know, the master class people. Um, the swordsmiths are n making enough money and they can't support、um, the younger generations who are willing to learn under them. They can't、um, support them by, in terms of、uh, giving them a salary, for example. It might be about not being able to provide them a place to live, you know, and all that kind of stuff, even though the apprentices will have to dedicate basically. A lot of their time for, for about 10 years, you know, and they have to work all weekdays, sometimes even weekends, from morning to very, to a very late time.、Um, they don't earn anything, they don't earn any money, they don't earn anything.、Um, but again, even if you do make those,、uh, it doesn't sell as well as in the past. So it's like, why the heck would anyone do this in, anymore? Kind of thing. And whenever I talk about this, a lot of people would ask me, the Shogo, it's probably because you know, Japan's rules and laws regarding the katana is too strict. I mean, you know, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos where I、uh, said my opinions towards the,、um, the Twitter. What was that? The, the source myth Twitter that went viral.、Um, he was trying to look for an apprentice and he said that he won't be paying anything, but ha- they have to work 24 7 basically.、And、there's a lot of people who are like, who would work for someone that doesn't pay for you? And, and, and you have to work 24 7, you know? And, you know, I, I talked about that because the rules and laws regarding the katana is very strict, you know, you need to have those skills in order to make katana. And a lot of people's question is why don't you just change the rules, you know, so that you, you don't need those licenses, for example, to make katana, or let's say you don't have to use the tamahagane steel, the traditional steel, to make it, or let's say why don't you just, you know, make all the processes by machine, you know, all that kind of stuff.、Um, so basically, I want to talk about the answer to this question, at least my thought towards it. So,、um, the one and big question. One and only reason I believe the reason why we can't do this, why Japan can't do that, is because again, Japan, Japanese swords katana is a piece of art. Now, I'm not saying this because、um, I, I am a big fan of katana and I want katana to be maintained as a piece of art. No, no, no. If we could change the laws to try to preserve the culture, I would love to do that myself. you know I think that would probably be the best way to preserve the culture. However, We need to keep in mind that,、um, historically speaking, we need to keep in mind that after World War II, what happened is Japan was actually、um, taken away its weapons completely once after World War II by the US, right? So, all guns, of course, all katana were taken away. And at that first point, right after Japan lost the war,、um, there was a rule that Japan will not be able to own any kind of weapon anymore. Basically, they will not be able to own any guns, no army, you know, no military, no katana, obviously. And they were all taken away by the US. And that's the reason why there's a lot of,、uh, still believed to be a lot of ancient katana、um, in the US, and people own them, for example. And that's one of the reasons why. But the, the only reason why we still are allowed to have katana today, you know, because we can have katana today in Japan, right? Is because the, the people in that generation, right after the war, basically begged the US saying that the katana is not just a weapon to us. And that's true. Historically speaking, yeah.、Um, the, for the samurai, obviously, there were stronger weapons like spears, bows and, spear, bows and spears, bows and arrows, spears, and long range weapons, for example. And katana was something that they would hardly use. You know, even in the Edo period, when the samurai always did have two swords on their waist,、um, drawing the katana first would be the one who would be guilty for a fight and would be seen as a coward, basically, trying to use your、um, soul of the samurai so easily and being afraid to, you know, 
against someone. So you wouldn't draw your katana that much in the first place. That means the katana was almost like an amulet. It was almost like a charm, a symbol for the samurai, right? So it is true that it is something spiritual for Japanese people. And that's the reason why, even though, you know, a lot of, there's always a discussion saying that, you know, there's always, there's better katana than the, than the, than the katana. And that's obviously true as a sword. as just a sword, you know, a steel stick. Obviously, there are much better katana, uh, much better swords than the katana. But the katana for Japanese people was much more than that, right? If you learn about the history, if you learn about the culture, it's very obvious that it's something special to us. So back in the, that time after Japan lost the wars and the U.S. took away all the katana, there was a lot of people begging, saying that the katana is not just a mere weapon, it's our soul, so we really want to have it back. And then, of course... There must have been a lot of communication there. I, I can't time slip back, you know, to really see what happened. But I'm pretty sure um, the U.S. didn't want to get too much, you know, complaints from the people left in Japan, of course. They probably wanted to, you know, um, conquer it and uh, use it as a way of um, communicating, negotiating with the other countries near Japan, you know. So I believe that's the reason why they allowed Japan to have a katana again, you know. And that's the reason why we can have it. However, basically, we need to understand that we are allowed to have katana under very special circumstances. So Japan cannot easily change its laws that easily. This is a very, very severe, sensitive um, part, part topic. Yeah. But we need to understand that Japan was a country that lost a very big war, and it is given permission to make katana, to hold katana, to own katana, and so on and so forth. So if we, for example, if Japan suddenly starts to make a lot of katana out of any kind of steel, first of all, that's not um, considered, you know, um, our soul anymore in the first place. And if that starts to happen, it'd be like, wait, 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 you guys said it's your souls and it's a piece of art, so that's the reason why we allowed you to have it. But if that's not the case, you guys are simply making weapons and that's a different story kind of thing. Yeah, and I'm not saying that anyone is bad in this story, by the way. Um, this is just as a fact. It's true that this is the reason why the law in Japan of making katana or regarding of holding, owning, and all that kind of stuff, the registrations and everything was built. That, that's how it was, you know, um, it is today. So th that's the really, really big historical point that we need to keep in mind. It's not as easy as um, other countries for just, for example, saying that, you know, being able to make any kind of sort out of any random steel and calling it katana in Japan, that's impossible because of this historical background. So with that in mind, um, we need to probably think that it's impossible for Japan to be able to make a lot of katana like in factories, you know, in the future, it'll probably be impossible for Japan to be able to make katana um, out of steel that's not tamahagane, for example, and so on and so forth. So I must say that uh, it's very difficult um, this, what should I say, this game is very difficult on how to try to preserve Katana under such a very strict um, circumstance, uh, situation. However, um, it's probably difficult to change the, the basic rules and laws regarding the Katana, so we have to try to think of a way how to go, uh, you know, what should I say, live align these rules but still try to preserve the culture because um, of course if there aren't anyone making katana anymore it's going to be very very difficult for us katana trainees to use real katana to do mat cutting for example and continue training and it's just simply very very sad that one of the probably the biggest you know uh, representative culture cultural item you know in japan is not going to be made anymore japan is really japan will have really lost its soul if we can't make a katana anymore with by our own people and such so i would definitely try my best to try to preserve it as much as possible in my life as i explained before um, about five to ten years ago we explained that there are about 300 source myths in japan but today uh, about five to ten years later we only have about 180 people making katana so if we just keep on going we just leave it the way it is right now um, I'm pretty sure while I am still alive, while you guys are still alive, there will be no one making katana anymore because, you know, no one can make it and no one can uh, sell it properly and so on and so forth. So uh, that's way too um, sad. I really don't want that to happen. I'm not going to have make that happen on my watch, you know, while I'm still alive. So 
I'll try to do everything I can, and uh, this is probably going to be a challenge. Of course, uh, I have a lot of stuff to do on 2023, so I'm pretty sure I won't be able to do this immediately, but it'll probably be a goal for me of 2024 to try to work towards this, uh, this problem. So then everyone, as I always say, the ultimate goal of my life is to make all Japan lovers' dreams come true. So I know there's a lot of people studying Japanese, willing to come to Japan to study, travel, or work, or even train our traditional culture and such. However, I am very afraid that Japan will not be able to make everyone's dreams come true in the future, because we're facing a lot of social problems, we are losing our traditional culture, and the younger generations who are supposed to be carrying on the good things about Japan are dying because of all social issues being shoved against them. So I really want to dedicate my life trying to make Japan a better place. I want to try to preserve... I want to try to solve social problems, preserve and evolve traditional culture, and also help other generations so you can have a brighter future. And to do that, the nearest goals I have is to make the Yushinkan Samurai Experience, where it works and interpret as success, uh, raise money to buy my very first bamboo shakuhachi on Kofi, and also sell the um, merchandise, limited edition merchandise, until the end of the 2000. 2022. I am so sorry, guys. Uh, for those of you listening to the end, I actually have a little bit of a sore throat. It's probably because of the dryness. You know, I, I'm the kind of person who drinks a lot of water um, during the day, but I've been, you know, outside a lot for interpretation for the experience I just mentioned and everything. Sorry, guys. I've been, I've actually been cutting the parts, but I've been coughing a couple of times during this podcast. Whew. I feel a little bit, little bit better now being able to talk to you guys. But anyways, um, I hope you can check out the description box for me. And I'll be waiting for your comments and opinions. Thanks so much, guys.